Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about overstock stock. Now, one of the main reasons I was taking a look at this stock is because back in July, they ran up massively to around $120 or $130 and now they're sitting at around $70 and this has left a lot of people with a ton of questions about whether or not this stock still has the potential to come back up to those all-time highs or if we're looking at a classic situation of a stock that simply ran too close to the sun and got burnt. So one of the main things that I actually like to look at is financial data when I'm kind of deciding whether or not a company has room to recover or if we're going to be seeing more selling in the future. And from their earnings report, you can see that Overstock is an extremely solid company. They're posting almost 75 cents per share of revenue and earnings are very, very good. So the expected earnings coming in November are also doing very, very well. So for what reason might a company like Overstock be selling off so ridiculously hard like we've seen over the last month where they're down almost 50 and over the past two or three months where they're down almost 70. So what I want, basically want to point out is the greater market and what's been happening in the greater market if we do look at the SPY is that they've been selling off massively here. So we were seeing some all-time highs around $356 when the market was just pushing up and pushing up. And one of the main problems is that these companies were reaching an all-time high. The S&P was reaching an all-time high, but there was no volume. There was a lot less traders holding up this price. And as a result, a lot of these positions were hollow. They were just empty and they didn't have a lot of support in the long run and especially not in the short run here. And that's why we've been seeing this huge, this huge market sell off here in the last few days. Now, the market as a whole, the S&P, which is one of the main indicators of market performance and of how the economy is doing, as well as a lot, a lot of these larger cap stocks like Apple, like Boeing, etc., you can see that the market has been absolutely selling off. And what this shows you is that we ran up too much. The stocks, a lot of these companies that were over 100% above what they were worth before the economic downturn are now feeling the pressure, this downward pressure from the market as a whole as a lot of people quickly rush to take their profits and not get caught in this absolute bloodbath that we've been seeing over the last month and a half. Now, it is as always possible to continue making profits during this time. Doesn't matter if you're a swing trader, day trader, etc. There are always going to be companies going up and there are always going to be companies selling off and going down. So one of the main reasons why I want to look at Overstock is to kind of show you guys whether or not they're reaching this level, this critical point where they might be seeing a small return to the upside or if we're more likely to see a lot more selling off in the near future here. And to do that, I actually use TradingView. Now, like I said, a lot of times you can't trade a stock without doing technical analysis. If you're just getting into a stock and hoping that it goes up and holding infinitely, then that's just wishful thinking. That is not investing. And a lot of people tend to do this because they see a stock going up massively, like what we've seen with Overstock, which they went from $50 or $60 all the way up to 120 in the matter of less than a month. So what that means is that a lot of people were probably extremely overconfident in their position. And this creates a situation where traders can make a mistake. They can simply like stop looking at the position. And this is always going to be a negative in the long run. Now, regardless of any stock, the stock's name, how sure you are that it will stay up, it is always going to be more beneficial to do this type of analysis and to kind of know what prices you're looking for and know whether or not you're getting a good value, a good bang for your buck, or if you're getting absolutely torn up by the market. So if you did buy at around 120, you officially got torn up by the market. You lost over half your portfolio in less than a, a few months, in less than a month and a half year because you bought near all time highs and you weren't doing this technical analysis that is going to allow you to kind of see whether or not or where a stock could potentially retrace to if they do see any type of support or resistance. So that's why it's so critical to do this type of analysis and to know what you're looking at when you're looking at it and when you're deciding to enter a new position. Now, what I've been looking at with Overstock is that they are back down to around the price that they came up from where they started their original rocket up 
in July. So that price was around $60 and you can see that it was well tested here. However, we saw a lot of strength and that's to be expected. This company was worth $60 before the economic uh, situation turned to the upside and before the stock market started reaching all time high. So it's only making sense that when we do see some kind of a retracement and especially one this strong, that they're seeing a lot of support near where this original good strong price is where a lot of traders are sure that this company is worth that price. So that's why we've seen a lot of resistance around the $60 level. And now we actually saw a lot more retracement to the upside when the market did recover partially here and around the $83 mark is where this company had its next resistance point. So as you can see when they were coming up, they had a lot of resistance to start the, the come up around 60. However, their second point where they did see some small consolidation was around the $80 mark. So I feel like that's why a lot of traders decided to sell at this point. And you can see that it caused a huge melted candle on the one hour chart. And this candle is also visible on the daily chart. So it was a very, very substantial pullback. And what this shows is that the stock is just not ready to break this $83 price level yet. And that takes me to my most specific top, um, things that I want to say about Overstock and about the prices that they are kind of testing at this moment. Take a look at the stock's price here. You can see that they have tested the 83 and they have tested the 60 within the last month and few weeks of time here. And that's going to be pretty critical in going forward and kind of seeing whether the stock is in an upwards direction generally or a downwards direction. Now, what you can see is that the last few hours have been absolutely murder and they've gone down from around $80 to 71 just in a single day. And that's what I was showing you over on the Robinhood. They're down almost $8 in a day, 10% of the company's value. What this means for a company is that they just don't have the strength to hold up that price at the moment. You can see that the last time they were up around this price, they were also completely murdered down to around $65. And what this kind of shows you is that the company is just not ready for this price yet. And there's a lot of traders in the market that are supporting this idea. So as a trader, when I see this, I'm thinking that right now Overstock is a company that may be overvalued. However, they're sitting in a range where a lot of traders would still buy or sell them at that price. So if I was a very, very smart trader here, what I would do is buy low and sell high. And it seems fairly obvious, but a lot of people always seem to buy when these companies are at their high points and they just don't know that this is the high for the last few weeks. They see a company go up two days in a row and they think, well, this is the next ramp up. This is the next July event, like how we saw here at the beginning of July. And it just isn't. And they end up losing a big portion of their portfolio. So like I said, that's why it's so critical to do this analysis. And if you do see this, then you can be educated enough to know that at a price of $65, you're getting an extremely good deal on overstock stock. But at a price of $80, you're not getting much of a deal at all. You're getting a very high risk trade with not a lot of upside in the short run. And that's going to be critical in making sure you make money or lose money here in the stock market, especially over the last few weeks where we've seen so much negative downside and so much turmoil and a lot of volatility in the price of these stocks. So just to wrap things up, guys, I think that Overstock at $60 is an absolute banger, a buy. You saw their earnings. They're doing very, very good. And quarter over quarter, they're increasing their sales and business very, very substantially. And that's honestly one of the most critical things for any stock that wants to grow into the future and in the long run. So that's why I would recommend Overstock in the long run. However, in the short run, if you are trading them, I wouldn't recommend opening any new swings above the $70 price range because of the fact that the company is just so weak at this point. They're just too weak to hold up this price right now. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of support holding them up near this $70 level as they've already broken it twice in the last few weeks. So what I think could possibly happen here after three tests of the $70 level is that they might break down again to 65. And this is going to be the one in a lifetime opportunity to get this stock at its cheapest price that it is going to be for many months here, guys. Like I, the, like I always try to say in my videos, the US stock market always goes up. They don't really sell off very often and they're in a big bubble where these companies just go up and go up and go up. 
And as a result, when we do see these pullbacks, it's always going to be very, very critical to analyze when is the best moment to buy. And if you do buy it at this level, then you are looking at a huge return in even years time, months time, it's obviously going to be a very, very substantial return. So in the short run, I wouldn't recommend you to buy overstock at any price over $70. But if you do get it below $70, that is a banger trade and you are going to be seeing a lot of upside in the future. I doubt, doubt, doubt that they will sell off below 60. Like I said, this is the price where they originally rocketed from. And that's why a lot of traders are supporting them at this price and buying them very heavily at this price. However, $83 is the first price that we saw resistance at, and that's another reason why traders are selling them at this price. So it's very critical to do this analysis and to know very clearly where your prices are, because if you do buy them at 65 and then you go to 83 and you're thinking to yourself, should I sell out or should I hold or should I buy more? Well, it's going to be critical to know that if you do break this 83 level, then you're looking at a lot more upside in the future. Whereas if you do see these melted candles, you're looking at potentially a retracement to the 70 or near to the 60. So as always, guys, keep a close eye out on this stock. There are a lot of opportunities in the market. If you're losing money with one company, just rotate to another one. There's not anybody telling you you always have to trade overstock or because you lost money with overstock, you have to get it back with this stock. There's multiple opportunities outside of these 10 companies that you may know, these five or six companies that you may know. And it's going to be critical to rotate as other traders rotate out of these tech stocks into these sectors that are more profitable right now if you do want to continue making money and especially in swing trading. So as always, guys, keep a close eye out on these stocks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.